Do you collect holiday treasures or perhaps like me, even create a few of your own? Well, we've got some great ideas on all that and more starting right now on my annual holiday special. As you can see, the poinsettias are certainly in bloom, the holiday decorations are out, and the Christmas music is playing, so that can only mean one thing, the holidays are upon us. Hello everyone, and happy holidays to all of you. It's great to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle, and if you know me at all, you know that I thoroughly enjoy everything about the holiday season. That's why we highlight so many amazing ideas, traditions, and celebrations during my annual specials each and every year. And this hour and this year, certainly no exception. We start with one of my absolute favorite traditions, and that is creating a holiday village. With my own Christmas village, I've taken some of the advice that you've given to me over the last couple of years, and I've tried to implement it by using different levels, different ground surfaces, and lots and lots of accessories. This this year is the largest creation to date, and I can tell you it has been 30 years in the making. This year I actually emptied out this room, as you see, took out all of the furniture so that I could have as much room to be creative as possible. I put up the tables, and the addition this year that caused me the most grief and yet brought a lot of happiness is adding a train. I have absolutely never attempted having a train, but my one grandson, Drew, loves all things trains, so I decided I would add one this year. Well, we got started and could not stop. As you can see there, it has grown so much in the last decade that you now actually have a walkway in which to walk through so that you can see all of the different levels. Um, some of my favorite uh, additions this year, as you can see there, um, a new waterway. We actually did something brand new. We created this section right here, which is all kids stuff, so that when my grandsons or other small children came, these would be hands-on items. Then we put the waterway right in the middle of the village so that we could actually highlight some of the water features and still incorporate it into the town center. Of course, the ski area is always an area that generates a lot of interest, particularly from the kids. They love the idea of seeing the skiers and the skaters, and that is what I was trying to do, really, really create just a beautiful image. I am thrilled with the end result, and I wanna thank Matt Stafford who put that video together for me. Well, of course, I'm not the only one who love, loves to put a village together. Guys, as well as gals like me, have a passion for this hobby. Tim Leonard is one of those guys. He wrote to tell us about his village masterpiece, which he says is the true story of Santa. This, this is the North Pole. We try and tell the story of the North Pole, and we've got a section that relates to where people would react to uh, Santa, but we have a tunnel built where the elves at the end of the day go, and they go back and live in the real North Pole. And so the balance of the display is where the elves live and work. Um, this is human land, and this is where people interact with Santa Claus. Elfland is a town where the elves live, and uh, the neatest piece there uh, would be Kringle Elementary School. It's where all the young elves go to school and there's a sleigh bus right outside picking up the kids taking them home. Um, the town square uh, is where all the shops and restaurants and that you can go and get, uh, have cookies and milk from Mrs. Claus or buy a candy cane or, or get some hot chocolate from the hot chocolate stand around the town square. There is an elevated area from which Santa, his sleigh launches. The factories, which is where all the elves work and where the toys are truly made, um, there's about 45 factories. The resort are where all the elves go on vacation. And the uh, North Pole Woods are the woodsman elves. They all have acorns on their uh, heads. And they're the ones that take care of and train the reindeer. When we got the first piece, we had no idea it was going to evolve into this layout. Uh, but it, you know, it's been 17 years, and it's been truly uh, a great love and passion, of, particularly of mine and of the families. It makes me feel great because I think it tells the true story of, uh, of Santa and what Christmas should be. And you really have to kind of get down and, and be at three and four feet and look at it from that perspective 
uh, at day and at night, see all the activity and uh, all the neat things that are going on in the village uh, and all the, and all the you know, just fun stuff that's going on. And I think it just speaks to the, the time of year. Wow, Tim, thanks very much for sharing that with us. It's a fantastic tradition, and that's exactly what we are here to talk about on this holiday special. To tell us more about traditions from around the world is a very dear friend and an old friend of the show, especially during the holidays. You know her. She is Dr. Lori. She is a PhD antiques appraiser and nationally syndicated columnist. She reaches 8 million readers monthly, and she's right. back with us. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Lynn. Wonderful nice to, to see you, you again. Thank How you. important is it that we create a tradition and then try to maintain it? I think it's very important. I think it's what you know our kids and grandkids come home to expect. I think it's wonderful in many, many ways. And what's interesting about a lot of the traditions is you have to sort of, I think, you have to integrate what's new in your life. You know, I've been traveling a lot in the last year or so. When you integrate what's new in your life into traditions that you always care about and that you love. You know, for example, you know, um, the Chris Kindle Marts actually start was the German tradition of your village. And you've been doing your village, you said, 30 years in the making. Right, right. And this relates to your heritage. And you so. know, it's interesting because um, this year I really had a big challenge with creating my village because I added that train. Right. And I had no idea. There are some people who just do trains every holiday. And, and I had no enough. idea exactly <laughs> what a massive job it was. Right. So you really have to have an open mind if you are going to try to integrate something else in it. But my grandson, Drew, kind of uh, motivated me to do that. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, and, you know, and now the children are getting to a point where, you know, you want to integrate their, in their loves, what they love like too you want that to be part of their experience and it will be their experience you know I talk about objects all the time and I talk about things with respect to how objects have emotions there's nothing more emotional than what's going to happen with family at holiday times I'm glad that you mentioned that because you know we do get emotionally attached to things we and do. I know that people bring items to you they respect your opinion as an appraiser right. but do we sometimes put more value on items because of the emotion the that we attach to it I think so I than think perhaps so. what it's really worth yes and then we have to identify what's monetary value and what's sentimental value right. sometimes they mesh and sometimes they don't but you know we were going to talk a little bit about those ideas of how we can be closer to others. And one of the ways I always think we can be closer to others is not think of how we're all different, but figure out how we're all the same. So in my travels and when I lecture and talk about objects or art museums or whatever it might be, I like people to have that understanding. So I do a lot of traveling and one of the places where I really op had my mind open to a new thing, Lynn, <laughs> I'm really an art girl, I'm not much of a nature girl, <laughs> but I got to go on a cruise to, to Alaska and I know you've participated in this before and I got to see Russia this year as well and I got the nature bug to see the American bald eagles and to see the elk and to see the wilderness it was wonderful. It was. And in fact, what's wonderful about that is you can also start to see how those traditions in certain places relate to holiday traditions and what's similar. So when I was in Alaska, I sort of got this nature bug and said, well, I should think more about liking <laughs> animals and being around them more, you know. And basically, I also wanted to integrate for the holiday special this year to integrate that idea of what is, in fact, a good holiday tradition in other places and how it's like what we do here. Okay, so for so, example, in Russia or Alaska, do they have Matryoshkas. different traditions than we have? Yeah, a little bit different, but the same. You know, the focus is on the gift <laughs> and who's giving the gift. But in fact, you want to look at these pieces. This is a typical traditional bought in St. Petersburg Matryoshka, and that is the nesting dolls. Many people have them, and they are a tremendous, wonderful tradition. They usually have a representative, continuous, repetitive face, and then on their body or their belly, their torso, they will have an image of either a snow scene or maybe a famous site, this and that. What the little gifts are usually inside, which is not unlike what you'll see in Scandinavia. Okay? And people start to say, well, what do you mean? Well, the gifts are actually hidden in something. So in Scandinavia, where I ate the best strawberries on earth, <laughs> on earth, in a big marketplace, not unlike your village, you're basically going to see the way in which the gifts are similarly placed within a particular hiding place. In this case, the shoes left outside, the clogs or the shoes, the wooden carved ones. This is an antique pair, in fact, and left outside a bedroom door so children get their little gifts. See, I love this idea. Forget all of that wrapping paper and the bags and the, the right. hassle of getting all that ready. Save if a you tree. can incorporate <laughs> the gift within another gift, it sounds like you've killed two birds with one <laughs> that's stone. Right. Yeah. This is wonderful. I think that's wonderful. Th that goes